Once we've set that stage and helped them envision that, we're just gonna draw a line down a piece of paper. We're gonna say, okay, what strategy gets you to where you wanna be right now? Uh, Brett, I'd be curious, you know, with your involvement in these transformational exit strategies and plans, you know, how do folks find those opportunities to maybe if somebody's looking to exit, how do they pick up those opportunities? Is there marketplaces for this or how does that usually work? Yeah. So the first thing is the strategy and the vision for what they're looking for, right? So we're going to yep. help them map that out. A lot of folks have an idea of what that is, but they, it's nice to have a guide who who has maybe done some deals with similar clients and similar look, you know, life uh, stages and similar um, um, amounts of wealth that they've mm -hmm. built. And so we're going to help them map out exactly what they want, right? And then try to use the tax. Uh, laws that are in place, such as IRC 453 or IRC 1031, or maybe right. even a Delaware statutory or an opportunity zone. We're going to try to find out which one of these helps you best uh, reach the vision for your wealth and your life, your lifestyle. So once, we, once we've set that stage and help them envision that, we're just going to draw a line down a piece of paper. We're going to say, okay, what strategy gets you to where you want to be right now? Sure. Right. And which one is maybe going to help you create and preserve more wealth? Now, there's two reasons to really sell, sell assets. Assets, highly appreciated assets, right? Yeah, right? Typically, there's the financial reasons you want to capture high value, and there's uh, you know perhaps even income reasons or, or lifestyle reasons, and that's really kind of the second thing is is kind of your personal reasons, right? It could be a partnership separation, it could be I'm ready to retire, it could be a divorce, it could be a death in the family, it could be a number of things. So there's personal and there's financial, and really we're going to encourage our clients, potential clients, to say, hey. I'm not sure of the personal ones, but those you have to clarify. It's a good time, good motivation to sell. And then the financial ones, we're going to kind of model and show you what options you have. And, and that's really leads into our first secret, which is selling and deferring hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in capital gains tax, how to legally break free from capital gains tax and find freedom to buy and sell your business or property or other highly appreciated asset without ever worrying about the 1031 exchange again. Ooh. And I know as commercial real estate brokers, because we both are ourselves, right? Hearing that, we're going, whoa, what do you mean? Don't, don't run away from the 1031, but hear me out here. <laughs> hear me out here. Um, a lot of clients, you know, when you relieve that pressure of that 1031, mm -hmm. you can essentially uh, free them up to actually list and sell and do, do transactions. But remember, the 1031 only applies to investment real estate. In fact, right. uh, with the Trump uh, recently, a few years ago, when he had his tax, tax uh, overhaul, part mm -hmm. of that was more restrictive. And in fact, the 1031 has been under attack for many years. Right. And essentially, it's it's been narrowed down to investment property, essentially. Okay, And it's also being challenged right now by potentially the Biden administration to take it away or limit it as well. So realize that the 1031 is only for investment property. Now, how about a high-end primary home? Well, we just did a deal in Palo Alto for $8.3 million for a seller who had a high-end primary home. He lived there since 2006. Remember, 1031 does not work for a primary home, but a deferred sales trust does. So we want to actually bring out those strategies, such as the deferred sales trust, to say, look, well, you can defer hundreds of thousands to millions of tax. Wow, okay. The second one, part of that would be uh, saving a failed 1031 exchange, okay? Yes. So one of the biggest objections a lot of us as commercial real estate brokers receive is, hey, I'd love to sell, but I don't have my 1031 lined up. Or I'd love to sell, but none of these deals make sense, right? right? I'm afraid if I get out into my 45-day you know, uh, window here, I'm going to run out of time. Sure. And I'm going to be set in a forced marriage we call it a shotgun wedding. Mm -hmm. where you're getting engaged in 45 days, married in 180. So we want to relieve <laughs> that pressure. Yeah. yeah, relieve that pressure. And then, by the way, uh, give them time to go back into real estate whenever they want, which is part of that secret, which is buying without having to worry. So any thoughts on that, Logan, so far or questions? Yes, I do have a question. So, you know, obviously, you, you know, in the commercial real estate world, first, I want to make sure that people understand that Brett and I are both real estate brokers. So, uh, you know, somebody that's talking about deferred sales trust, we are real estate brokers. So we have nothing against a 1031 exchange. We are in the business of adding value to our clients, looking at their specific, unique scenarios and figuring out the tools that we have to provide them. And so that's, you know, I think this is uh, very timely and unique that real estate brokers are talking about different types of of opportunities because most of the time, you know, or some of the time, you can get uh, folks really, you know, that in a, in a real estate profession, you know, they're just salespeople, so to speak. And you know, frankly, that's what we're trying to elevate against. And yes, there are just salespeople, and a lot of them are in the residential side of things, and that's okay. You need those types of folks to do those types of transactions. 
we're really trying to take a consultative approach and understand what somebody's trying to uh, accomplish.